Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of The Guido Goes Off. I hope everybody's doing okay. I hope everybody's um, had a good day. Looking forward to the weekend. Um, so, this episode um, is actually a fan poll I put up. Um, gave three choices what uh, people wanted to see. And they wanted to see me... What's the modern term? Spill, spill tea? I guess that's what it is. And um, I'm not, I'm not one for spilling it. I meant for throwing it in your face, kicking you in the gut, and giving you a stone cold stunner. Uh, so, um, with that being said, um, the fans voted, and, um, I'm gonna do this. This is a list of my ten least favorite current wrestlers. So, yes, they have to be currently employed. You won't, you won't see Eva Marie on this list. Um, oddly enough... Big shocker to everyone, you won't see Roman Reigns on this list either. No, he's not my least favorite. There are people I don't like more than him, and there's reasons why. Um, okay, so starting off, I'm going to try and get through this quickly. Uh, number 10, Jinder Mahal. Again, not so much him personally as what WWE has done with him in recent months. Um, this His uh, WWE title reign um, and the booking of finishes. And basically there's them, them supposedly making him look strong because they're trying to, they're trying to move in on the India market. Um, and so they wanted um, a banner champion for uh, that part of the world. And he's looked like weak, weak sauce. Um, he can't win a match without the Sings interfering. And, you know, and in the process has made Randy Orton look bad and has kind of derailed Shinsuke Nakamura. And again, this is really no, no far on his part, you know. If your boss said, hey, we're giving you a promotion and, you know, roll with it. I mean, he's he's done what he's needed to do. Um, he, he's, he's, it, it had, there has been some improvement um, as, as far as him being a heel. Um, I just still don't see him as the top heel. Um, it was kind of just sudden and thrown on us and that's what I don't like about it. It was, you know, it wasn't so much that we should boo this man as to why. We, we're not really hating it. We're just questioning it. Um, but, you know, in all fairness, it's making the best of a bad situation. Um, or a situation that, that the fans don't like. I mean, um, I would say it's kind of similar to Roman Reigns, but it's... It was oh so, oh so rush. It was, I mean... A clear business decision to do so, whereas with Roman, it's been it's been building, and you know, and then you think they're doing something right, and then they fuck it all up, and it's, you know, that's why Roman didn't make this list. It's there's been progression, and it's clearly been their fault in how to handle it. Um, so number ten, Jinder Mahal. Uh, number nine, no surprise, same one that's watched the show. That she's on here, but you might be surprised why she ranks so low, and that is Alexa Bliss. Um, now I'm going to start with the positives. And we're going to do a compliment sandwich, I guess. Um, she she has improved in her time on the main roster. She has she's clearly one of the best talkers um, on Raw. Um, easily the best in the women's division. Um, and it's just, I mean, there's some booking issues, like how the finishes go. It, I mean, she's improved in ring, and even I'll admit that. Um, my issues are um, her how she progressed in NXT. Um, it's been um, said and documented um, that she slept her way um, to kind of the top in NXT. I mean, getting put with Blake and Murphy when, you know, when they were already the NXT Tag Team Champions, uh, they didn't need a manager 
or a valet, and yet there she was. Um, and then the move to the main roster. I mean, um, don't get me wrong. She's done. She's done well. I mean, she's a lot of fans like her. Um, but I, I attribute that uh, to the um, pseudo Harley Quinn esque appeal that that they've seemed to put on her. Um, so that's docking points for originality. Um, that's the thing. I mean, you know, she's, but she's done well. She's popular with fans. She's she is improving, and is um, slowly but surely becoming one of the top acts in WWE. And I can't argue with that, but I don't have to like it. So number nine, Alexa Bliss. Number eight. Bobby Lashley from Global Force. Why? It's bland. He's just so bland. I, I um, when I could watch uh, Global Force, I'm, I don't even know why I'm trying to find a stream for it. But um, you know, when I was watching when he was still TNA, when he was still Impact. Um, and they wanted him, you know, had him as when him as their champion. Wanted to um, show us that this this guy is the best that we have, and and, and there was better. Um, you know, it's just my, that's one of my issues. Um, you can do a lot of things in professional wrestling, but be bland isn't one of them. And this was their top guy. So it, it just it made no sense to me to have him as your top guy. And that and, you know switching between you know the switching between occasionally he does fights for strike force I think and or Bellator. Yeah it's Bellator and in kind of wrestling. I mean one or the other man. Pick a side. I mean I could have the same argument with Brock Lesnar, but there's some excitement there. There's some personality there, and of course there's Heyman there. You can't you know, Lashley has no mouthpiece. And he really should have ha should have one. There needs to be a lot more mouthpieces. And besides Bruce Pritchard. Get off my TV. Um, so number eight, Bobby L. Ashley. Uh, number seven, Sasha Banks. Um, hot potatoing issues aside, um, my issue with her is her treatment of fans. Now, I have seen firsthand when she pulls into the arena, you know, she'll she'll sign autographs, she'll be good with that, and when she does signing appearances, she'll be great with that. But if it's one on what she considers her time, don't go anywhere near her. Because basically she'll treat fans like shit when the cameras aren't on. Um, and it's been well documented. And also now she's uh, kind of getting, from what I hear, uh, she has um, a backstage issue with Alexa Bliss and a you know, ter territorial caddy thing. I, I, um, I, you know, there's not really, nobody's really dove into this um, in any sources that I can find, but um, it might lend itself to why she just had her last uh, Raw Women's Championship reign lasted nine days. Um, so, it's, you know, it's simply, you know, you know one, you know, giving your story in that, you know, you know, knowing where she comes from, to see how she treats people, you know, now that she's, you know, a success and making money, um, I don't think it's right. But then again, this is my list, so it's probably just me. You know, if you like Sasha, more power to you. If you like anyone on this list, more power to you. You are welcome to do that. You know, this list is my opinion. So that's my reason why I don't like her. I mean, she's a good worker, but, you know, that's it. And that's... And to be honest, I think we, we, the era of the horsewomen is past in WWE, and it's 
and, and she's just, I guess, trying to hang on to it. Uh, so number seven, Sasha Banks. Number six, Baron Corbin. Um, I have talked probably ad nauseum. Um, I, how many times have I made the joke about uh, Baron looking like uh, Vigo the Carpathian while he was still a troubled youth? I, I, I don't know. I've, I've made that joke several times. Um, but it, it's come up as of late. The undeserved sense of accomplishment. Um, the picking fights with fans. Now, don't get me wrong. He does have some redeeming qualities. Um, we, you know, we saw when he broke character um, and was consoling that boy. He made cry. Um, makes you a good man. Makes you a shitty heel, but makes you a good man. Um, but recently on Twitter, um, going after fans that don't like him, um, <laughs> basically at one point just stepping in it huge uh, when um, he talked shit to um, a veteran. Not a good move. Not a good move at all. Um, in fact, what today... Um, he commented on one of Samoa Joe's tweets about the PWI 500, uh, saying, what's PWI? Lord, I hope you were just trolling and you weren't serious, for one. And two, quit feeding the trolls. Okay, he's busy. And, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna troll fans, you need to sit down with Kevin Owens and say, how do I do this? Like, seriously, how, how do I troll fans. Because what he's doing is not working. What Kevin Owen does works. But what he's doing isn't. Um, so um, and then and then just that undeserved sense of accomplishment, like he's done something. Um, and I think another thing that, that, that gets me about Corbin is the temper tantrums in mid-match. Um, you're supposed to be a badass. You don't throw temper tantrums. Come on. You play foot. You play football. You, you know, your Golden Gloves boxer. You know, you were, you, you're one of the few people that can consider yourself a legit badass. And here you are throwing temper tantrums. Come on, come on. Um, yeah, you know, I want to see improvement, and I hope he's, you know, you know, sitting here looking at what's going on, and it's like, man, am I fucking up? I need to change. I really, I hope that, I hope that happens. Because I mean, clearly what happened is, you know, he pretty much kissed his push goodbye. I mean, here he was sitting on top of the world, and so, you know, he's hoping there's improvement. But uh, right now, Corbin's number six. Number five, Randy Orton. Um, why do I not like Randy Orton? Much like Baron Corbin, he has an undeserved sense of accomplishment. But then again, he's had this for years. Um, it's pretty much the man expected to be handed everything to him when he came to WWE simply because of his lineage. I just think there's people, um, I just don't think he's had the same work ethic that a lot of people have. I'm, and, and, you know, and I, a lot of his success has been attributed to his connection with Triple H. Um, but it's also clear that his best work has been either with or against Triple H. Other than that, he does enough. But there's the you know you're in a business where good enough isn't good enough, and you got to make that name for yourself. I mean, I mean the Rock. You never saw the Rock rest on his family's lineage, but with Orton, it's you know. I'm Bob Orton's son. It's, it's kind of been hanging. I mean, it, he's kind of made his own man, but it's not enough. And I mean, and believe me, there there are far worse multi generational wrestlers. But this is the thing: it's my least favorite, not the ones I don't care about. I mean, you know, Bo Dallas has been struggling, and Curtis Axel. Don't be started on Curtis Axel, but with with those, you have to care. To say that you're not your least favorite. In those cases, I just don't care. So, number five, Randy Orton. Number four, Big Cass. Um, you know, the, the song he and Enzo came out to is called Soft as a Sin. Well, 
Uh, much like Bobby Lashley, bland is a sin. Um, see, here's the thing. Um, you can be seven feet tall. I mean, I'm sure there are not a lot of seven foot tall wrestlers out there. But regardless, you can't be boring. That's what he's been. He's just been boring. His matches, I mean, when it's not a squash match against Enzo, um, his match against Big Show was just moved at a snail's pace. And I understand if you're keeping it simple with your moveset, um, but that must just drug on and it, I, yeah. It's like I said, you know, Big Show, yeah, he's seven feet tall, but Big Show has had a personality and that's, and has been willing to put in the work and do crazy, do whatever crazy shit Vince uh, wants to put him through because he likes being out there. He likes entertaining. He's actually pretty damn good at it. Um, and that's why Big Show stuck around for so long. Was he had he had the charisma? He you know he had what he you know he had everything it takes to be great in in WWE's um, scope of professional wrestling. Plus, he's over seven foot tall. Cass doesn't have Cass has seven foot tall, but he doesn't have all those pluses. Hence, why you know he needed Enzo. I know there's people that don't like Enzo, but. It was clear he, he, you know, was the charisma in the, t in, the, in the team. I mean, the man could fill a room with his charisma. Um, so anyway, number four, Big Cass. Number three. Uh, number three, probably not a surprise, given how many pot shots I take. Nikki Bella. <laughs> oh, how do I loathe thee? Let me count the ways. You only have a job in WWE because of who you were dating. You held down an entire division uh, in the pro trying to progress. Um, 301 days. Need I say more? Um, <laughs> you used um, your boyfriend's power to keep the title on yourself. Yes, this is documented. Um... You take credit for something you did nothing, you, you did no work um, to build. In fact, tried to tear it down. You believe that, you're, that your reality show is the reason anybody cares about the women's division. Um, <laughs> your moveset was terrible before your neck injury. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm glad she recovered from that and at least tried to make a comeback. The division has moved past you. And you're trying to remain relevant. And, you know, the biggest, the best, the, the, pretty much the only reason anybody pays attention to you is because you're dating slash engaged slash will be marrying John Cena. Oh, and the um, special attractions. Um... Did I leave anything out there? I think no. I think I covered all it. Um. So, uh, that's why Nikki Bella is number three. Number two. Oh, this one jumped up there real quick. Sexy star. Now see. Oh my god. Um. I mean, I was liking sexy star. You know, I mean, the first female to hold the Lucha Underground title. And, you know, you thought she could be something positive. And then you do what you did at Triple Mania. And then how you justify it. Um, covered it a couple episodes ago. Sexy star hurt Rosemary. Um, put her in an arm bar. Uh, refused to let it go, and then uh, hyperextended her arm to the point where her elbow was dislocated. Um, you know, you know, and Dane, you know, that's a simple thing. I mean, 
there's, you know, I as you can see, I had a, a list of 10 people. But, well, up until number one, nobody on this list went to went into a match and decided in the middle of that match, I'm going to hurt somebody. Again, these are people who trust you with their bodies and you broke that trust. And the reason why, given what you're as well, you're paranoid. You're hanging on to your spots. You see any other woman in a locker room as a threat to your station, to your supposed uh, position in whatever company you're in. And so you decide you're going to make sure there is no competition for your spot by hurting people? There's a lot of things that can be forgiven, but when you violate the trust that a, you know that another wrestler trusts you with, and that is their body, their way of making a living, that is unforgivable. But like I said, she's still number two on this list. As well, there's one person who, in my opinion, has done far worse. But yeah, number two, sexy star. Number one, do I really even need to go into it? I probably just need to say three words. I can probably stop there. My number one least favorite current wrestler, Alberto El Patron. And we all know the reasons why. So I'll start, I'll start, I'll start with the low end, and of course, go to the high end. You sandbag in matches. You no-show events. You treat other wrestlers like garbage. You take every opportunity you're in front of a camera to denounce your former company. You slander your family in the process of mocking your former company, not completely forgetting the fact that your significant other still works there. You beat the shit out of somebody for looking at your girlfriend, for trying to be nice to your girlfriend. You beat the shit out of somebody because you feel like it. You take credit for gestures you had no part in. And above all else, you beat your girlfriend. You treat her like a hired hand. You basically treat her like a trophy, trying to dangle her in front of your former company. And you are not a well man. You burn just about every bridge you have in this company. I'm amazed Global Force is still. Um, is, is, uh, you know, the, it broke that apparently they're scheduling him for the November tapings. So he still has a job in Global Force. But yet because you were such an asshole, they stripped you of the title because your behavior was not what they wanted from their champion. How you still have a job is beyond me. I mean, you must have that, your, your lawyer must be good. Because I think that's the only reason Global Force hasn't shown you the door. And, and he probably smells funny too. I, I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm just guessing. So that's the list. That's my 10 least favorite wrestlers. Um, the reasons why. Um, it's like I said, some of these people aren't, aren't, aren't horrible people. Some of them are horrible people, but not all of them. And, you know, I try to be nice and, you know, be positive about it. And, uh, you know, thank you guys for, uh, one, giving me the suggestion, and two, hopefully, watching this show. Um, you did ask for it. So, who are your least favorite wrestlers? And what did you think of my list? Um, am I way off base anywhere? Uh, so, you know, you can always let me know in the comment section down below. 
And of course, um, you can always uh, tweet at me, um, talk to me on Instagram, follow if you'd like. It'd be pretty cool. It's, you know, it's right there. Um, and of course, and thank you, folks that have subscribed. And so, if you feel like it, like this video, share it with your friends, and please, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do. So, <laughs> until next time, I'm gonna take a deep breath. <sighs> Too much emotion. Until next time, I'm Guido, and I think we're done here. <laughs>